So here are my longevity hacks. Number one, nutrition, food. Let food be your medicine. Let medicine be your food. We've all heard that before. Number two, please, you had to do one thing, dramatically reduce your sugar, your starch, and your processed food. Dr. Jacqueline, who's a chiropractor, once said, if man makes it, I won't eat it. Exercise, incorporate resistance training. That does not mean carrying a barbell around with you on an airplane. You can do it with bands. Resistance training is weights. I travel all the time. I pack bands. I, I have my own body weight. Do I prefer to go to a gym in the um, hotel if they have something? Sure. Learn how to use a TRX. Learn how to use a kettlebell. Learn how to utilize a dumbbell. Sleep. Sleep may be the greatest longevity hack that you had. Last night was an awful night. It was a real aberration for me. It was a night that I got less sleep and I haven't gotten in months. Sleep is a critical element for overall rejuvenation of all your bodily functions. It allows your brain to detox. It's your brain shrinks to 40% of its size when you sleep. Health detectables. I'm wearing an aura ring. I've done uh, continuous glucose monitoring. The more that you test, the more you'll be aware, the more that you'll adhere to a day-to-day -day lifestyle change. Meditate. I wouldn't have gone to sleep if I didn't meditate. So it's a great idea. Many people get up and the first thing they do before they go to their phone is they do 10 minute to 15 minute meditation. Intermittent fasting. I, think, I, I believe that intermittent fasting is a critical hack. Kind of went over it a little bit before. Intermittent fasting is something that virtually everybody can adhere to. I would love to seed for another webinar love to talk about intermittent fasting with you and intermittent fasting, how it pertains to immune function and how women have to intermittent fast differently than men. Supplements. I'm going to share the supplements that I recommend for longevity hacks. Purpose, mission, community. Um, you know, we are beings that need other people around. If we have a mission, we're positive on what we do. Hormesis, I'm gonna go into that, I have a few slides on that. Hormesis, hot and cold exposure. Let me be clear, hormesis is a slight strain to the body that the body responds to in a positive light. And lastly, without question, low level laser. You're not gonna have longevity hacks. Dr. Mark Hyman, Dr. Peter Tier, wonderful docs, great books, none of them talk about laser. It's a big hack that I add when I'm on the lecture circuit because it's a critical element, non-thermal laser to longevity hacks. So to enhance longevity, a couple of big takeaways again, dramatically reduce sugar, starch, processed foods, consume at least 30 to 40 grams of protein for breakfast, followed by another 16 grams at lunch and dinner, increase phytonutrient intake, incorporate resistance training and community. That was straight from Dr. Hyman's mouth. Heat shock proteins, this is why we sauna. You produce these heat shock proteins and they protect against neurodegenerative disease. They also protect against cardiovascular disease. These heat shock proteins are great in that they promote longevity and they slow muscular atrophy. Now, after taking a sauna, I go up, I don't have a dump um, bin, a uh, cold uh, ice bath, so I try and take a cold shower. So cold shock proteins, reserve proteins, which were released from the liver, dumped into the bloodstream, anti-inflammatory, support wound healing, they increase muscle repair, they increase protein synthesis. Please understand that hormesis is a good thing to the body. It's a slight strain. And I'm in fasting, it's hormesis. Your body responds, we're made to respond. Hormetic threshold is something that's vastly different. So here are my five, these are easy. Multivitamin, multimineral. This is something I take every day. This is something that I recommend that all my patients take. This is a standard. Omega-3 fatty acids, two to four grams. Vitamin D3 with K2, I do about 5,000 I use with K2. You've got to take D3 with K. Pre and probiotics. I think everybody's aware of a probiotic. The prebiotic feeds the probiotic to allow for a, what we call a postbiotic. And everybody should take a good fruits and greens drink. It's very hard to get 10 vegetables in a day, 10 servings, especially when people want to do one or two meals, which I don't agree with in intermittent fasting. Nevertheless, it's a 40 calorie uh, drink. If anybody's interested, reach out to me. I'll tell you where you can get it. Now, here are my Dr. Rob's leading edge nu nutrients for longevity. 
after I go over this, we're going to flick the switch and go and discuss long, laser for longevity. So fisetin is a polyphenol found in many fruits, vegetables, including strawberries, apples, and onions. Um, it's been studied for its potential benefits related to aging. It's shown great promise in inhibiting senescence due to its ability to act on numerous biological processes. So fisetin, you will be hearing about in this specific future. Green tea, EGCG, allows an inhibition of pro-inflammatory mediators, decrease in oxidative stress, inhibition of angiogenesis, decrease in the cell cycle arrest, inhibition of mTOR pathway. It slows the activation of tumor suppressor genes. Spermidine, it's great for DNA stability, cellular growth, cellular differentiation, and cell death. It's really shown to have great information, recent findings on preventing neurodegeneration, helping with aging and longevity, heart function, and immune function. Lutaline is also a great add to HOBA. It's a natural molecule that is actually discovered in something we use in my house called Himalayan tartarary buckwheat. It provides a way to support the body's natural defenses against oxidative stress. BPC-157, it's a peptide that's referred to as a Wolverine supplement, has amazing healing capacities, a myriad of different possibilities. And PEA, P, fabulous things, technically referred to as a SPM or pro-resolving lipid signaling molecule. If you want to decrease inflammation, PEA is a great choice. So we are now at laser section. Can, uh, you know what, let's take that off. Sorry guys. So let's talk about laser for longevity. The real question is, could non-thermal laser be the answer for longevity? I believe so. So why do I signify non-thermal laser versus other lasers? Because the laser that we're using in Oconee is a non-thermal. I don't like lasers that promote heat. Stop a second and say to yourself, do I want to heat a person? There are instances that you would, maybe in a chronic condition, but you don't want to heat a brain. You don't want to heat a nerve. You don't want to heat the mitochondria. You don't want to heat the gut. So for me, non-thermal laser could be the answer for longevity because it's non-invasive. There's no downtime. There's no pain involved. The treatment times are pretty short. I mean, if you've ever seen me use it, it's within a few seconds. It's pain relieving properties. It's known to decrease swelling, improve blood flow, enhance energy production. Again, a huge takeaway, optimizes mitochondrial function. It's anti-inflammatory. It has immune boosting properties, produces stem cell production, which is a critical element for longevity, decreases stress hormone, it is neuroprotective, it downregulates stress responses, accelerates wound healing, and in the aesthetic light, it upregulates collagen production, fat loss, cellulite reduction, and skin conditions. Jasmine and I were just having a conversation before, and I was kidding around, and she said, you know, your hair looks different. And I said, great, you know, um, I haven't done anything, you know, I haven't, meaning I haven't used any Rogaine or Propecia or plugs at this point. All I've been doing religiously have been lasering my hair and it's making it more vibrant and holding on to those follicles that are so common to males in my age bracket. So everybody take a very good look at this. The most, for me, the most energetic laser in the world Arconia has, and you have access to the most energetic laser outside the US. Take a good look. You have abilities to get the, well, you really have ability to get the green light too, but red light is 650 or less. The Coney uses 635 nanometers. The green light is about 520, and the violet light is about a 405 nanometer. Now, once you go over 720 to 760, you're only producing about 1.5 electron volts. Unfortunately, for photochemistry, it's all about photochemistry, it's about electromagnetic transfer of energy, it's not about power. A minimum photo energy is required to cause electrons to jump to higher orbits. Can't do it with any wavelength, which is typically associated with a hot laser, over 720. 
So the red light will affect the electromagnetic transfer of energy, will allow mitochondria coupling, if you will, and electron uh, jumping from one cell to the other. Obviously, as you go down this particular visible light scale, green is better than that for electromagnetic transfer of energy, and the best one is the violet light. So understand that you always, in my opinion, you want to use multiple wavelengths. Each wavelength has different functions and properties, but right now you're looking as far as electromagnetic transfer of energy. So the violet light allows in the electron transport chain to open up what we call complex one and two. The green light works with complex three and the red light works with complex four. You have the ability with these three lights or a combination of them to positively affect the mitochondria. What is one of the number one problems that we've seen with aging? The mitochondrial dysfunction, one of the quickest ways, one of the most effective ways, one of the ways that are backed by a litany of articles is to utilize low level laser or electromagnetic transfer via a non-thermal laser. So, here is the Iconia lasers that have been studied. The 635 nanometer laser allows for mitochondria activity, proliferative activity, allows for the production of interleukin-10. Interleukin-10 is a critical interleukin. It is an interleukin that actually turns on health-promoting properties and reverse shuts off interleukin-6, interleukin-8, and F-kappa B, et cetera. So you always want to have a red light if you can as a starting point. The 405 nanometer, the violet light, allows for the reduction of apoptotic cells on fibrous tissues and an improved breakdown of scar tissue due to a high electron volt. 532, reduction of Tg beta, but it's great for stem cells. You really want to apply the violet and the green to the gut, especially within the stem cells, because stem cells turn over in the gut in four to five days, which allows epithelial cells in the gut, allowing gut lining to heal in five to seven days. Simon always says, Rob, do me a favor, make sure you make a distinct, clear differentiation between non-thermal laser and hot lasers. Well, here's a distinct determination. Non-thermal laser improves cellular function and the stability of the mitochondria. It can, without question, non-thermal laser can dampen inflammation, improve mitochondrial function, and optimize our genetic expression to enhance overall quality of life. <laughs>